10 cool facts about beavers. Did you know entire ecosystems depend upon beaver dams for their survival? My name is Chris and welcome to Animal Science TV. Fact 10, beavers have orange teeth. Beaver teeth enamel is reinforced with iron. This extra strength is what allows them to chop down trees. I like chewing on wood as much as the next person, but it annihilates my teeth. Even when their orange teeth wear down, it's not a problem because like all rodents, beavers have ever growing incisors. Nine, nature's little lumberjacks. Beavers are nocturnal and mostly work the 12 hour night shift. They prefer to cut down smaller trees that aren't too heavy to transport, but sometimes they will cut down full grown trees with the plan of collecting the upper branches. Beavers chew around the trunk in a circle and after the tree cracks to the ground, the entire family comes to help cut it up. They then drag the smaller sections to the water and ferry them towards the construction site. Beavers are actually incredibly strong. These burly lumberjacks weigh about 60 pounds and can carry their weight in wood. Eight, dam engineers. Before a dam is built, a single male beaver will scout streams for a deep enough section of slowly moving water. Two to three feet deep is okay. Here, he will build a new home and hopefully it's luxurious enough to impress his future wife. After picking a location, logs and large sticks are rammed into the mud below. The beaver then reinforces this infrastructure with rocks to prevent it from drifting downstream. Next, foliage, twigs, leaves, and mud are used to fill in the gaps. Beavers know that rivers have the power to wash away everything in their path, so they will build the dam only so high that it can safely withstand the pressure behind it. When completed, the dam creates a reservoir behind it. The goal is to further raise the water level around his future home construction site. A typical dam is 10 to 300 feet in length. But according to the prestigious Guinness World Records, the longest dam to date is 2,788 feet long. It is more than 50 years old and was discovered by satellite imaging in the remote wilderness of Canada. Beavers are very obsessive when it comes to fixing leaks. They can sense changes in water currents, but probably mostly detect leaks by sound. When researchers place speakers playing a running water sound near a beaver dam, they came back the next day to find the speakers buried in sticks and mud. 7. Home Architects Beaver lodges can be 10 feet tall and 25 feet across. This classic picturesque lodge is situated in the middle of the reservoir, surrounded by deep water. But sometimes, rivers are too damn strong to build a dam, and beavers have no choice but to build a lodge attached to the riverbank instead. Way less flashy. All lodges have multiple underwater entrances, which deter any predator who isn't scuba certified. Wolves, foxes, birds of prey, bears, or bobcats would all have to dig through the entire mud encrusted and sometimes frozen mound to get inside. When designing a new lodge, beavers can dig whatever tunnel system and chambers that they like. This huge pile of debris takes about two weeks to build and helps keep body heat in during the winter time. Beavers sometimes even allow muskrats to share the lodge. Extra watchful eyes can be helpful. Six, close-knit families. Beaver families share one house, which is socially structured much like a traditional human family unit is. But life moves much faster and you get kicked out of the house when you hit puberty, not after turning 18. The family starts with a male and female, who generally bond for life. Every spring, they have one to four babies called kits. In their first year, kits learn engineering skills from their parents and help maintain the dam. When they reach one year old, 
they become babysitters for the next litter. The babysitters bring food to the newborns who can start eating after turning just one week old as they wean off of milk. Usually by year three, kits reach sexual maturity and leave home to build a new beaver family. Mom and dad typically live with six to 12 of their offspring at any given time during their 10 to 15 year natural lifespan. Five, peaceful vegetarians. Beavers are not termites. They are herbivores and they can't actually digest logs. They eat mostly tree bark, leaves, roots, and most interestingly, aquatic plants. Building a dam increases the wetland area for pondweed, cattails, and lily pads to grow. Beavers are passive farmers. Before wintertime, beavers stock up on green twigs and buds. They store this fresh food in deep water where it becomes refrigerated under the ice. Beavers do not hibernate, and after it starts snowing, they only leave the lodge to quickly swim under the ice to eat from this food reserve. Ice can further waterproof leaks in the dam, and it's critical for water levels to remain deep enough that the beavers can swim under the ice. A freeze through to the bottom of the pond could starve the beavers. When food is scarce, Beavers will even eat their own feces to have a second chance at absorbing all of those nutrients. Why do all the coolest animals have to eat poop? Four, a keystone species. Like humans, beavers are an animal that modifies the environment. Dam building is vital for all the other species in their wetland ecosystem. A keystone species holds an entire ecosystem together and if it disappears, the system in whole will collapse. For example, coral is a keystone species for all other species on the Great Barrier Reef. If coral goes extinct, so does 25% of all marine life reliant upon it. Beavers have a similar impact. Beaver dams transform quickly flowing streams into a tranquil pond environment. Also, the mass deforestation caused by beavers has a benefit. It allows sunlight to shine into the wetland. This open wetland environment can support a rich diversity of life. The less turbulent sunny pond allows photosynthetic algae to grow. It is then eaten by insects and up the food chain, we have fish and frogs, which can then be eaten by otters, snakes, or birds. At the top, apex predators like eagles, bears, and wolves can now survive in this new environment. All made possible by the beaver. A massive thanks to our new Patreon, Epsilon is greater than. His science YouTube channel is in the description below, and so is my Patreon link. Back to number three, a battle against extinction. Prior to colonization in the 1600s, North America was home to about 400 million beavers. Shockingly, by 1900, only 100,000 were left. That's a 99.9% .9 decrease in population over just 300 years. Like a ravenous plague, human settlers swept west across modern-day United States and Canada. Colonists found beavers to be an incredibly valuable resource. We hunted them for their fur, meat, and special caster sacs. Caster sacs contain a biological oil that was very expensive for two reasons. First, castorium oil smells great, like sweet vanilla, and it can be used as a perfume or as a natural food flavoring. Back in the day, vanilla syrup contained beaver butt juice, but today we use mostly synthetic flavoring. And second, castorium oil was sold as medicine, a calming sleep medicine that was sometimes transformed into aspirin. Once the beaver was recognized as a keystone species, a series of conservation efforts, hunting bans, and reintroduction projects allowed its numbers to recover. Today, beavers are not endangered, and there are more than 10 million worldwide. Fact 2. Powerful swimmers. 
Beavers have several adaptions that make them outstanding at swimming in nature's ice baths. That castorium oil they make? It is used to naturally waterproof their coats. Webbed feet. The large surface area helps to quickly propel themselves underwater. A flattened tail. Beavers use this tail as a paddle and as a rudder. It can also make a loud slapping sound against the surface of the water. This alerts family members that a predator is nearby. A variable heart rate. Beavers can lower their metabolism and hold their breath for 15 minutes. People can do this too, but only elite freedivers and David Blaine. Swim goggles. Beavers have a third transparent eyelid under the main two. It's called a nictating membrane. This see-through skin allows beavers to see underwater with the same comfort of their eyes being closed. And finally, fact one, an unknown future. A human-sized relative of the beaver, the giant beaver, went extinct about 10,000 years ago during the last ice age. A mix of climate change and hunting were to blame. Today, there are two surviving species of beavers. The North American beaver is quite similar to the Eurasian beaver, but they can't interbreed. Both the North American beaver and the Eurasian beaver thrive in northern temperate zones with wetland forests. Eurasian beavers are slightly larger, have a lighter fur color, build dams less frequently, and have bigger snouts. I like big noses, so <laughs> I guess the Eurasian one's better. Eurasian beavers are also more clumsy on land and have a bigger oil sac. The Eurasian beaver came much closer to extinction than the North American beaver did. It was exterminated from the UK in the 1500s, and only an estimated 1,200 remained worldwide at one point. Today, both American and Eurasian beaver populations are healthy, but beavers are at risk because they are in a conflict with humans over water management. Farmers and landowners see the beaver as a pest because they can cause local flooding and even redirect water away from their crops. It starts to get messy when animals mess with people's income, but I think, overall, beavers are helpful because they build and maintain thousands of small dams for free. This greatly reduces catastrophic flood risk and purifies water, not to mention their importance to biodiversity. I'm interested to see how the conflict between humans and beavers evolves as water becomes a more and more precious resource. Click here, 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 here for more animal videos. Um, we hit 1,000 subscribers today, and that was my goal since day one. It seemed like a distant dream, but we did it, and I love you guys for helping me along the way. See you next time on Animal Science TV.